Alright, hi students, welcome to part 2 of the videos. Alright, so in the previous lesson, we talked about how the reactivity series can actually be used to determine the type of uh, method of extraction. And in today's lesson, we will actually zoom in onto the extraction of iron using these three raw materials, hematite, limestone, and coke. Okay, and we, this entire process happens in what we call the blast furnace. So iron is the most widely used metals in our daily products, be it uh, in its elemental form or as a part of an alloy. But have you ever wondered how did we even get hold of this element itself? Right. So in reality, iron actually um, does not exist by itself, but it is found in an ore, which is called the hematite, as you can see in the diagram here. So hematite contains of the com contains the compound called iron three oxide and along which uh, there are other acidic impurities and so from this uh, hematite we can actually extract out the pure metals so the extraction of iron takes place in a blast furnace so it's a very tall structure made of bricks and lined with um, refractory material able to sustain high heating and this is a diagram of how the blast furnace looks like so it's a very um, huge structure this extraction process actually requires three raw materials the first, uh, these are the three raw materials, hematite, coke, limestone. Do take note of what are their chemical formula, okay, and make sure that you are able to write it out. The purpose of these raw materials, for hematite, actually serves as a source of iron. As you can see, it is the only raw material that consists of the iron element. Carbon, as, uh, sorry, coke, as what we mentioned previously, is actually a reducing agent, okay. And limestone, which is calcium carbonate, is involved in uh, a process that helps to convert silica into slag, okay, which is calcium silicate. We'll talk more about all these uh, individual functions in the next few slides. Before we look at the specific reactions in the blast furnace, we need to have a general idea of how it works. Firstly, the raw materials, the iron ore, hematite, the coke, as well as the limestone, are added at the top of the blast furnace. At the same time, Hot air is being used to heat up the entire system while waste gases are being removed from the system. Okay, so this is how a blast furnace works. In terms of the products that are being produced, there is uh, molten slick as well as molten iron. Okay, however, as molten iron is denser than the molten slick, it will be found at the um, lower half of where the products are usually found in. Okay, it will sink. There are five main reactions that occur in the blast furnace. Okay, and we can actually uh, categorize them into two different uh, groups. Firstly, um, there's three reactions that's related to the formation of iron. And secondly, there's two reactions that's involved uh, related to the formation of slag. So in the formation of iron, there's a total of three reactions. Firstly, the coke actually burns in air to produce um, carbon dioxide and a lot of heat. So heat from the combustion is required to heat up the entire furnace for the extraction process. And this is what we will um, notice in terms of the chemical reactions that's being involved. Carbon, which came from coke. Okay, remember for coke, we usually represent it as carbon. Reacts with oxygen to give you carbon dioxide as well as heat. So, this carbon dioxide then can react with more coke to produce carbon monoxide. Okay, take note now it is carbon monoxide. Just now it was carbon dioxide know of the difference in terms of the prefix all right so this is reaction number one and this is reaction number two right and this carbon monoxide is important for the subsequent reaction that can remove iron from hematite the third reaction that's involved is whereby the carbon monoxide acts as a reducing agent and reacts with iron three oxide to produce molten ion which is collected at the bottom of the furnace Okay, so this Fe2O3 actually represents the mineral that is found in hematite. Please make sure you are able to spell out the name of the ore and most importantly be able to write out all the equations that I have shown you since the previous slide. Okay, so of course right now what you can do is actually you can also take this time to try and figure out why is carbon monoxide a reducing agent. Try to work out the oxidation state of the respective elements and help yourself better understand what is exactly happening in this particular reaction. Okay, and why exactly is carbon monoxide a reducing agent? 
Okay, the next category, which is the formation of the slag, is involving uh, it involves two reactions. Firstly, limestone is decomposed by heat to produce calcium oxide and calcium dioxide. Okay, so this um, calcium carbonate, okay, which is actually representing limestone. Next, the um, impurities in the iron ore is actually being removed. Okay, these impurities are mainly silicon, silicon dioxide, SiO2, and can react with calcium oxide to produce slag. Slag can then be used to make roads. Okay, so this is what you see over here in this diagram. These are what we call slag. Okay, like the type of materials that you see people laying out on the roads. And this is the reaction that is being involved. Alright, so likewise, once again, there are two reactions. Sorry, as in for this one, there will be two reactions. Okay. That has been involved in the formation of slag. Okay. Likewise, please take note of how to write the entire chemical equation so that uh, if it comes out in the exams, which is a frequent question, you'll be able to write it out. Alright, so with that, we have come to the end of the second part of the videos. Um, so do remember to watch the remaining part in order to get a better understanding of this entire chapter. Thank you.